Welcome to the second series of the stories behind the songs with Dave Kittle. Back in 1979, Dave began a radio career at Shea 106 in Ottawa, which spanned 17 years. He was one of the on-air voices that I grew up listening to, and he introduced me to new music that literally changed my life. His knowledge and passion for music are inspiring, to say the least. And in this 12-part podcast, Dave talks about eight of his favorite songs and the history of how those songs came to be. So pull up a chair and join us for the stories behind the songs. My favorite acts of all time, The Stones, The Beatles, The Who, Elton John, okay. and Steely Dan. I love Steely Dan. Steely Dan is a musician's love, band, I'll tell you. Love, yeah. love Steely Dan. Always have, from their very first album, Can't Buy a Thrill, uh, to this very day, um, sadly, Walter Becker is no longer with us, uh, but Donald Fagan carries on. I love all of his solo material. I love everything. They're, the Steely Dan are one group that never made a bad song. They have, they never, in my yeah. opinion, recorded a bad song in their entire career. Um, started out, uh, Becker and Fagan started out as uh, songwriters in New York, uh, at the Brill Building, which the very, was, was the very famous uh, building in New York that housed a lot of the uh, early rock and roll songwriters. Okay. Carol King, Neil Sedaka, the, the songwriters in New York back in the 50s and 60s that churned out all these hits for all these other artists. All these other, people, all these yeah. other artists. Were, well, most of them were based, based in the Brill Building and another building uh, in the same area of New York. Uh, Don Kirshner, the famous movie music publisher, had his offices in there. Uh, Ellie Greenwich and Jeff Barry. Um, can't think of it off the top of my head, but there were uh, all these people. Anyway, um, Becker and Fagan uh, got their start as songwriters in that milieu and uh, moved to Los Angeles in the early 70s and hooked okay. up with a, guy, a producer by the name of Gary Katz and formed Steely Dan, the band Steely Dan. Uh, released their their debut album in 1972. Uh, they were they were an actual band back in those days. Jeff Baxter, who later went on to play with the Doobie Brothers, great guitar player, was the guitar player in Steely Dan. Okay. Uh, their first uh, two albums were the band, uh, and um, their third album, uh, Pretzel Logic. They started to use outside studio musicians. Okay. The songs were written by Donald Fagan and Walter Becker, and they started to drift away from the whole band idea and started using studio musicians to augment their sound. Okay. Their songs were getting a little bit more complicated, more uh, jazz-influenced, Yeah, <clears throat> and they started to bring in outside studio musicians, uh, which, after their third album, the band pretty well split up. And there was only Becker and Fagan left, and they would hire studio players to play on all of their songs. Okay. Uh, um, Becker played bass and guitar. Donald Fagan played keyboards and sang. But they would bring in people like <clears throat> Oh Jeff Picaro, um, uh, Victor Feldman, uh, Bernard Perdie, all these very famous studio players to play on all of their uh, songs, and their songs started to get more and more complex. Mm -hmm. And they needed they needed the best musicians to be able to pull a lot of this stuff off. Yeah, yeah. And complex is a really good word to use oh, for yeah. them. It's very sophisticated. Oh yeah. A every note means something. Very much so. Yeah. Very, very, very uh, slick arrangements. They yeah. they used a lot of horns. They used a lot of backup vocalists. And and if you're familiar with their material, you know mm -hmm. how how good their stuff is. Oh, yeah. uh, one of my favorite songs of theirs is a song called FM. Okay. No Static at All, which was the title track to a long-forgotten movie uh, released in 1978 called FM right. about this renegade radio station in yep. Los Angeles. Um, and it had a, a great soundtrack. That was the most memorable thing about the movie was the soundtrack. The soundtrack, yeah. Uh, the movie itself, which I've seen a couple of times, uh, haven't seen in years because... It's never been available on DVD, as far as I know. It's okay. never been available on VHS, as long as far as I know. And I've never seen it on television. Okay. It just disappeared off the face of the earth for some reason. Hmm. But they were contracted to write the title track to this movie, FM, which they did, uh, right around the same time as they were recording their landmark 
Asia album, okay. which came out in um, 1977. Uh, and they had a whole bunch of different people on this uh, uh, album, including uh, Jeff Picaro on drums, uh, Pete Chris Lab, who a uh, great tenor sax player who played in the Tonight Show band, Johnny Carson's Tonight Show okay. band, yeah. uh, played the tenor sax uh, on uh, a lot of their stuff and is featured on the song FM. And also, um, Glenn Fry, Don Henley, and Timothy Schmidt from the Eagles sing backup vocals huh? on the song FM. Uh, one of the other nice thing, uh, cool things about the song FM is the is the it, they use strings, which Steely Dan never used strings at all. Yeah. Uh, very rarely would they use strings, but they used a really cool string arrangement on the song FM, uh, arranged by a guy by the name of Johnny Mandel. Hmm. Now Johnny Mandel is an interesting uh, guy, old time uh, arranger. Worked with the likes of Frank Sinatra, Tony Bennett, Barbara Streisand, Count Basie, Peggy Lee, Jeez. and is also a, a writer, a songwriter, uh, most famous, uh, famously for his song "Suicide Is Painless," Ugh, which was the theme Mash. from Mash, yeah. written by Johnny, Johnny Mandel. Mandel. Of course, now that's why the name was familiar because I, I'm a Mashaholic. Yeah. I watch. If I know every episode, if yeah. there was a trivia game about Mash, I'd yeah. likely win it. Yeah. That's how crazy yeah. I Johnny Mandel Mash. wrote of the course. song Suicide is Painless, of course. Yeah. which yeah. was first included in the film and later became the theme right. for the TV show. Without lyrics. But that's in the right. film, they actually... They actually uh, sing lyrics. They actually that's sing right. that. And they don't do that until... During the, the scene, during the, one, the scene where the guy... The, the, uh, wants, wants to kill himself. You, the, yeah. the, he's getting some dental work done, right? Or no, he wants no, to kill himself. No, the dentist wants to kill himself because like he's still a was, virgin, that's right? right? The and dentist they wants to kill this, himself. They make up this thing, and then the dude comes out with his guitar and yeah. actually sings, sings it. Suicide yeah. is painless. Yeah. Uh, Johnny Mandel also wrote another very famous song called The Shadow of Your Smile. Which you anyway, Johnny Mandel, who's still alive, by the way. He's 93 years old. Holy man. He's still alive. He did the, uh, the string arrangements for the song FM, which is very, very cool. That is very cool. And I remember, I, I always remember a few years ago when uh, Walter Becker passed away, sadly passed away. There was a tribute to him on YouTube where they showed the top of the Empire State Building uh, at night. And it was all lit up uh, to the song FM. They did a tribute to Walter Becker where they had a helicopter flying around the Empire State Building at night and they had a light show. Uh, uh -huh. on the top of the Empire State Building to the song FM as a tribute to uh -huh. uh, Walter Becker. And if you you can Google it on YouTube and you can see it, it's very, very well done. Yeah. All these lights, these lights are all coordinated with the song um, on the uh, top of the Empire State Building. It's wow. very cool. But one of, my, one of my favorite songs by Steely Dan, FM, yeah. uh, from one of my all-time favorite I call them a group, but they, they only they started out as a group. But uh, Becker and Fagan really yeah. became yeah. became Steely Dan. Uh, won a Grammy Award one year for their uh, for uh, album of the year. Uh, Two Against Nature, that's the name of the album. Okay. But they reunited, and it ended up winning uh, album of the year at the Grammys. Wow. Very surprisingly, wow. very surprisingly, because it was not a, a not a big commercial success. Okay. But it ended up winning uh, winning album year. Did but you I'm, did you see them when they came to Blues Fest uh, quite a number of years ago? I did. I've I've had the I've had the pleasure of seeing Steely Dan twice. Twice. Okay. I saw them at Blues Fest. Yeah. And I also saw them at the NAC mm. about three years ago. Wow. Shortly before Walter Becker died. Oh. And it was one of the great musical evenings of my life. I bet. I bet. It, I had I I remember I bought seats when it they first went on sale. I had seats in like the fifth row, and I loved it. Yeah. I knew every single lick of every song, of yeah. every single song they did, and they had a, a absolutely spectacularly good band with them. Their drummer, I wish I could remember their drummer's name. He was so good because yeah. their drums, oh. some of their some of their songs, the time changes. Oh, the time changes! It's insane! Just, oh, it's insane! God. I know. 
Well, one thing that I took away from that concert, because after watching it, um, I had said, if there's one show I'm going to see this year, it's going to be Steely Dan. Yeah. And I went and I stood there, and of course, I'm just grooving. I'm loving every second of it. I know every song. They didn't really talk very much to the audience. No, they didn't, didn't say much at all. They just got up, started playing. And so many people, uh, you know, that we knew who'd been, been to the show had made comments like, yeah, yeah, it was okay. It was all right. And I was like, are you nuts? Like, what do you mean mm. that was all right? That was incredible. And mm. what I realized then at that point is that S Steely Dan is largely a, uh, correct me if you think I'm wrong, but largely a musician's band. You've been listening to the stories behind the songs with Dave Kittle. Join us again for the next part in this series. Brought to you by Sunholes Music. Download the latest album now at sunholes.com.